What is going on, everyone? Welcome to the Thai Live channel. I'm Min Thai, and in this podcast for you today, I know usually I would talk about the nails and the nails industry and all that, but today I have a special guest for you. This is my best friend, Du Hon, and he is a math teacher, but not just that. He is also the coach of the robotic team, and this man right here, I kid you not, every single year, he takes the team to national. Yeah. And I want to bring him on this show so that if your kids are interested in STEMs, education, robotics, you're going to get all the 411 from this gentleman. Go ahead and tell me a little bit about yourself, sir. Oh, man, thank you very much for having me here. And, you know, I understand. Am I, am I your first guest here? I'm like, uh, you know, you know unfortunately, you are not my first guest, Summer. but... I am so happy to have you here because I know STEMS has been something that is hyping it up in this day and era. Yeah. And a lot of parents probably want to put their kids in these programs. Yeah. So I would love to know is how did you start it to start from a math teacher and getting into robotics? Yeah. And how do you elevate yourself into national champion robotic team? Well, you know, I, I think the most important thing to know about, you know, especially from the parent standpoint is that, you know, how do I get my kids involved in doing this stuff? And especially, you know, right now, compared to like 20 years before, AI is a big thing, right? And if we don't get our kids prepared for that, I'm not saying that everyone should be being programmers or be doing robotics, but if we don't get our kids prepared for it, I think it's going to be a lost cause later on because things are moving so fast, right? So for me, I think robotics is a passion because the thing is that it allows kids to be creative. Right. right. It's not one of those things like in a regular class. Remember, you know, back in the days when we used to be in elementary school, middle school. Yeah. Right? We go in there, we sit down, teacher lectures. Yeah. We do our homework. Great. You learn stuff, right? But the thing is that when do you ever apply any of that stuff? Right. right. And right. You know, that's right. I mean, like from your experience, you haven't you had a time like, oh, man, I don't want to learn this stuff because it's what's you don't even know what you're going to use it for. No. Right. No, right. And so here, I think one of the things is that, you know, um, especially for STEM and robotics, uh, allows the kids to be more engaged. You know, I'm the type of person, I'm not sure about you, but I'm the type of person that learns when it's very hands-on. Me too. I, yeah, they, right? Not, not everyone is book smart. Correct. Right? Boy, you can give me a book and I can study all night and still fail the test. But there if you, you teach me to do something, I can learn the step and practice that same thing and do it over okay. and get better at it. Right? The, the hands-on component. Correct. There's, there's been a lot of research behind the fact that, you know, kids learn better when they're actually actively engaged. They're using the motor skills and they're you know really into be able to problem solve, right? Correct. That's, make, that's the biggest thing. And you know the reason why I've gotten you know I started out as a math teacher and then eventually got myself into STEM is because that I realized that you know teaching math is great. I love math, but the thing is that you have not every kid is going to be a math kid. Like you know, imagine in class, right? I suck at math, right? man, and I'm Asian. I make the Asian community look bad, dude. You know <laughs> right? because a lot of people believe that Asian supposed to be at math. Look at me, I am not good at math. Don't give me anything that's fraction. Right, so the thing is this, I mean, like, again, not every, you know, yes, there'll be a lot of kids that are smart that can handle this because, you know, they've had a lot of practice. Yeah. Let me tell you, about, I would say, 95% of the population of the kids in school, they actually, they need that type of stuff in order mm. to do well, right? I so, agree with you. Right? So then that, that's why I was like, you know what, we, we need something especially for the kids to be able to really love doing what they do, right? And not, and just, you know, it doesn't seem like it's something boring or something like, you know, that's, that, that's uh, mundane. But they need to be able to have that, that competitiveness. They need to have that practice. And for me, it was robotics. Nice. That's, that's why I like uh, doing it day in and day out. And, you know, uh, again, no matter if you're in the Bay Area or in the Central Valley or elsewhere, you know, robotics has really been able to bring up the, the, you know, the, the technicality, the, you know, the, being able to prepare a nation and our kids to wow. flow into those jobs. Wow. Right? So, as I mentioned earlier, you have taking your team to national. But I know it didn't start out like that. No, so can you give me a little bit of scoop of how you really start building that robotic team from scratch? I mean, like, right. if somebody was going to come up to you and say, like, how do you do it, Mr. Hong? What would be your answer? Well, let me tell you. The answer is there's no magic behind it, right? I mean, with anything, right? Even, even right now, what you're doing, there's no magic behind it. That's a lot of hard work. Correct. Right? And, you know, the truth is, there's always hard work that needs to be put in. Now, Obviously, I've been doing robotics for a long time, and I kind of know what it takes to be able to prepare a team. But the, I think the main component is to be able to build confidence 
in the kids. Right. right. So, you know, robotics is really different. It's like, okay, so you think of it as a sport. Like, for example, you think basketball, football. Right. right? What do you, how, do, how does a team get good? How, how does a player get good? They practice. They practice. Yes. Same thing in robotics, right? They have to have plenty of practice so that they feel confident in doing what they do. Wow. Right? So... Robotics, I, I would say, is for me, it's almost like a sports, but it's for the sports for the mind. But what if right? the kids out there, they're, they, they want to be in robotic, but they, they feel like they don't have the capability. So how do you get them ready for those, yeah. those opportunities? First of all, you know, I think that's a stereotype that a lot of kids that are doing robotics are smart and they already know what they're doing. Correct. But actually, to tell you the truth, when, whenever I work with kids in this uh, field, I usually try to not, um, not pick kids or not work with kids who already know it. I actually keep, pick kids who are more motivated, who wow. are willing to learn, because the thing is, that's the main key to be able to have a successful, you know, per, a person in robotics, successful team. Wow. Now, when you go to these events, they must be expensive. So, how do you come up with the fundings? Because I know schools are very limited with fundings, and so how do you get the fundings, and how do you get people involved to help you with the program? Yeah. So you know, I think it's just the. It's different depending on where you are geographically, Correct. right? Because there are certain uh, areas in the United States where, you know, parents and kids can afford to pay for the travels. And there are certain areas where it's more supported by uh, the government and public schools. Correct. Right. So, um, you know, and I work in both settings. And, you know, one thing is you have to realize is that what works in one doesn't work in the other. So, wow. you know, it does get expensive, especially, you know, in the previous school I worked at. Um there, you know, it's every year we would go to uh, states, we would go to national, we also go to world. Wow. And when we attend those competitions, the, you have the registration fee, you have flights, hotel, sometimes because it's the age group that we're dealing with, sometimes it's not only for the kids, but the family that comes along. So, wow. you know, in a different situation, for example, if you're talking about where uh, in a scenario where a, a public school is uh, supporting the program, then obviously the district has to kind of, you know, this is a big thing for a district when a, right. when a team makes it to national and world. So uh, we would, you know, it's assumed that usually the district steps in to be Correct. able to send the kids to uh, these competitions. Versus on the other side, it's usually, you know, because of its, uh, the, you know, depending on the how big the program is, sometimes we ex uh, we uh, ask for parent support to be able to wow. with those funding. So from your experience of doing robotic, what has been the outcome that you see from your students? Well, you know, the great thing, I mean, I, I work at the, you know, I've worked in both the middle school and high school age uh, uh, for robotics. But mm -hmm. one, of the, uh, one of the things I love about working in the middle school is the fact that, number one, uh, middle school is a point where kids are trying to figure out what they want to do. Correct. Right? And if, you know, at that point, it's, it's a perfect age for them to be able to do this because, you know, kids that you not, would not normally think that would like to do robotics, they end up the one to be the one excelling. In the wow. Life, right? So again, the thing is that it's not, you don't, you just can't judge a kid by the book, you know, by the cover. Because right. the thing is that, you know, again, uh, the idea is to be able to give everyone access, to give everyone a fair chance to have them exposed to this. And especially at the middle school level, you know, they want to be able to figure out what they want to do in life and what they're interested in. And the best way to do that is in robotics. And, you know, for, for the middle school I worked at, they had three, uh, you know, sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade. So I would have the kids in all three grade levels, and they would start off, you know, being really shy, not knowing what they're doing, being very not so confident. Correct. But the thing is that my goal is at the end of the the eighth grade year, they're gonna be someone that's confident. Wow. That goes in, knows exactly how to, how to execute. Correct. And being able to work as a team, being able to know how to lead each other, and this is at the eighth grade level. Wow. So imagine a kid, you know, you would never imagine that an eighth grader. At that age, let alone anyone at that age, will be able to have that confidence to lead and run a run their own team. But that's the that's the capacity that I want to build in each each of the individual. Wow. So with all your international appearances, what is the preparation like? Well, again, especially you are dealing with these young kids. I mean, how do they handle the pressure? How do you calm them down, and how do you get them ready? Well, you know, again. I always refer back to robotics as being a sport, right? Again, for example, look at tennis. Tennis is all sports, of, you know, it's a mind game. When you lose, you actually lost because you're, you're losing against yourself. Correct. Right? It's not, it's not your opponent. You always make those mistakes because 
the mentality that you go into the game with, uh, a, certain, a certain situation when you're losing, how do you tell yourself to kind of back out from that and how to be able to revert your mindset so that you can do better? Wow, right? yes. So it's, it's, it's less of a robotics thing, but more of how do to be able to uh, um, treat, I mean, um, help kids develop that mindset to be able to overcome certain things that upset losses wow. and you to keep them going. Because in robotics, again, it's like always that thing. When kids get frustrated, when kids get, you know, when they are like losing matches after matches after matches, they don't want to do this anymore. They're Correct. Like, Man, I'm, I, don't, I don't think we have a chance of winning. But the thing is, my job is to come in and say, hey, this is our goal. This is what you got to do. Remember, we practice this plenty. Let's have that mindset. You can do it. And then being able to like build that confidence in them, wow. build that positivity in them, and wow. then they go out and we execute. Wow. That's amazing. And... What is your biggest challenge when you guys are going through the competition and building the team, getting them ready? Like, what would be your biggest challenge? I think, you know, uh, other people don't see this as a biggest challenge. But so, again, the majority of the kids I, I work with are middle school kids. Correct. So uh, I'm pretty sure, you know, you don't, you, uh, for those who have dealt with middle school kids, that age group is a really interesting age group. Correct. Not, not because, you know, they don't have respect or anything. But because at that age group, they're trying to figure out themselves. Right. They want to be, what they're trying to do, what they like, what they don't like. And sometimes at that age group, they're always trying to look for someone to, to follow. Right. Sometimes it might be a bad example. Sometimes it might be a good example. Right? I agree. So, so at that age group, it's really difficult to kind of like get them to settle down and get them to really stay focused on certain things. Right. right? And that's been the, my biggest challenge, especially when I was running a uh, a club of eight teams and possibly more than eight ninety students on a team. Wow! So, you know, imagine dealing with not just one or two. So that's teams how many teams. teams you take to the the tournament. Most times, most times. So how many kids that to- to- total? So depending on the year, like we've had as high as ninety five. Wow! Kids, middle school kids, and you know. And how many teams go to national? Uh you know, there's been years where we sent all eight teams to national, wow. all eight teams to world. Um, I'm telling you guys, teams. this man, when it comes to robotic, he is no joke. I know this man. He's my best friend and a very respected teacher. But when it comes to robotic, you do not want to mess with this guy. And the reason why I brought him on this show is because I want you guys to understand how important it is for STEM's education. And I want you guys to understand that this robotic stuff that we are talking about right now is almost equivalent to what AI is like right now, guys. That's what it is. And you're like, what is it? So, like, you know, parents are always wondering, well, well, you know, what should I put my kids in? I mean, right. Right now here, especially here, right, there's a lot of sports, right? Right. Which is great. But, you know, again, I think one of the things is that, you know, as the way things are working, as the way schools are going, as the way jobs are being transformed, especially right now, we're living in, like, a, such a big change in our era where AI is literally going to take over. I mean, whether we like it or not, Right, whether we like it or not, I agree with you. you. Know, there's been uh, you see the headlines. Correct. You know, AI is going to take over a good chunk of the you know the workforce. Correct. In the coming years. Yes. And I know like I'm against that. Right. It, it, it takes out you know it takes away the livelihood of people. All right. But the thing is that you know the I think as an educator we always try to be able to prepare uh, our future. Right. Whether it be our kids, your kids, or, you know, to be able to uh, for this type of uh, revolution. Right. Right. And so, you know, as parents, you're always wondering, okay, well, how do I do that? You know, what, what's in it for me? What, what happened to my kids? don't like robotics. What, what's, why is it that they, they should consider putting them into robotics? Because, you know, parents put kids in soccer, you know, gymnastic, yep. karate. It's great. Right? Right. I mean, every kid should be well-rounded. Right. But I think now, more so than ever, I think being involved in a STEM and robotics program is very crucial. Wow. Because, let me tell you, no one can be flipping burgers later on. No. Robotics right. going to be doing that. There you go. Right. It's wow. Like, it's like if you look back about in the you know the, the, the industrial era, there was someone going around lighting the, the light for the street lamps. Right. Right. That was an absolute job. Right. Does that exist anymore? No. Nope. nope. So the thing is now it's so. I mean, you're starting to see like self checkout. Yeah. You right. know, you starting to see robot server now, like that robot right. that brings the food right. out. Right. I mean, the world is changing, and we got to make sure that we right. are on top of our game. Right. So, you know, the whole thing with AI and robotics, again, uh, you know, this is not to say I'm in favor of it. This, but this is saying, you know, regardless of what, we still have to be able to prepare our, our kids, our future, to be ready for this. Right. right. And one of it is, again, in robotics. So, you know, you as a parent, you might be wondering, so what do kids learn in robotics, right? Right. So, number one, obviously, programming. You right. know the basics of programming. Correct. You have to do a lot of 
You have to tell the robot what to do. Number two, mechanical skills. You have right. to be able to build the robot. Number three is the most important, most biggest thing in, of all is actually how to work as a team. Right. Right. So, uh, you know, that is the most crucial part, regardless of whether they are interested in the technical stuff. All right. right. Um, so that's why, you know, being a part of robotics really helped build the confidence Correct. in kids. And that goes a long way, no matter what kind of job they're going to be in right. in the future. I agree with you. So with that being said, you know, with all, are you still doing robotic right now or you have something going on for yourself? Yeah, you know, so I, I've recently had um, a little bit of a career change. Okay. To family reason, things like that. Yeah. And, you know, so now I, you know, as, as an educator, uh, I always like to always... Um, kind of help people out and be able to kind of pass the whole message about, you know, why uh, robotics is, is, is important right. and in different communities. Correct. So, um, you know, one of my thing is to really be able to support um, uh, teams, schools, and any organization who that, that loves to do these type of things that, or, or is even wondering, hey, we want to do robotics. We, we, you know, this seems like something new. Well, you know, can, can you help us? Right, right. So I've kind of, you know, gone into the, down the consultant route and my goal is to be able to pass, you know, kind of spread this message out to throughout all the families, schools, and the larger community so that, you know, so that we can better prepare our kids. Man, I think what you're doing is great, man. I mean, throughout the year of knowing you, you have helped so many kids and you have helped so many. You, you have built like a good pave for, for some of these new generation, man. And you're passionate about it. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, you know. I think one of the things is that, you know, yes, we can all have a job, but I think the, the job that we all want is something that we can wake up every single morning and able to do it for free and happy to do it. Right. Right. And that's, that's, that's a passion right there. Right? That's awesome, so, man. Um, so any recommendation of parents at home right now that's watching, like if they are curious about getting their kids in STEM, what would be the right program? Like what would be the best advice you can give for any parents who's wanting to put the kids in one of these robotic programs. Yeah. So I think, you know, depending on where you're at, um, you know, what community, I think the very first thing you want to be able to start is at the school, to be able to ask the school about whether they have any robotics or STEM program after school or STEM courses during the day. Uh, if not, then you can go out to the community because I know in certain areas there are communities that have uh, robotics teams um, as a private team, like, you know, like a private soccer club. Right. Right. So... Um, and then if not, you know, there's always a plenty of resources online. Um, there are, and robotics is for all different types of age group, ranging from, I would say, about, you know, first, second graders all the way up to university level. So there's plenty of resources online. Uh, first Robotics, Vex Robotics, uh, those are the two main um, organizations that does this. And so, you know, uh, you, all you have to do is just kind of start somewhere. Uh, and then, you know, find someone who, who's willing to be able to help guide you through uh, the process of, you know, uh, getting your child involved in robotics. Man, thank you so much for being on this, man. I appreciate all the information that you gave us. And if you guys have any questions, is there any way they can reach you to, to if help with robotic consultant? Like, is there an email, website, anything? Yeah, so, you know, I actually just recently started my own channel on YouTube. I mean, not haven't been to, uh, to you know, to on uh, posting my videos, but uh, I wanted to start the channel so that I can, you know, make have parents more aware about what robotics is. It's called uh, Robotics is Life. Right? Nice. Because, you know, for me, and uh, when I thought about it, for me, when my students were working with me, they were they were literally, you know, working hard with robotics and not playing game, not doing anything else. So we always made the joke that, hey, you know, we got we to gotta do this right because, you know, you know, they're doing day in and day out and being able to uh, do robotics. So that's why it's... Uh, uh, being able to do robotics life, um, but yeah, you, you know they can uh, contact me. I'll probably leave you, give you my uh, email, and post it in the comments. You got but, it. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, man. I hope you guys learned something. As you all know, I do talk about nail content, but I always want to bring entrepreneur uh, people who works hard to share their stories, to share their background, because at the end of the day, we're only human and we all have our own circumstances. And if you can use any one of our experience for any type of thing in your life to benefit you please do so because that's what the show is all about. Thank you for listening. Let's go ahead and tune in with the music. Thank you so much, everybody. Y'all have a wonderful time. Thank you for listening. I'm out.